And now I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to take off my shirt on stage. So perhaps you've never heard the story of the star-bellied Sneetches. Now the star-bellied Sneetches had bellies with stars, and the plain-bellied Sneetches had none upon theirs. Those stars weren't so big, they were really so small, you might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star-bellied Sneetches would brag, we're the best kind of Sneetch on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort, we'll have nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whenever they met someone, they were out walking, they'd hop right on past them without even talking. When the star belly sneeches had frankfurter roasts or picnics or parties or marshmallow toasts, they'd never invite the plain belly sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near, and that's how they treated them year after year. Then one day, it seems, while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping along on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMucky McBean. I've heard of your troubles, I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that. I'm the fix it up chappy. Then quickly, Sylvester McMunky McBean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like a star belly sneech? My friends, you can have them for three dollars each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside, then the big machine roared. And when the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon theirs. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars on the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best sneeches, and they are the worst. But now how in the world will we know they all frowned? If which kind is what or the other way round? Then up came McBean with a very sly wink, and he said, things are not quite as bad as you think. I'll again make you the best kind of sneeches, and all it will cost you is $10 each. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. And that, <laughs> and that wondrous contraption, working very precisely, took all the stars off their tummies quite nicely. Then with snoots in the air, they paraded about. They opened their beaks and let out a shout. We know who is who now, there's no doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. Then, of course, those with stars got awfully mad. To be wearing a star was awfully bad, so of course, Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them to his star off machine, and from there on, you can probably guess things got into a horrible mess. For the rest of the day on those wild screaming beaches, the fix it up chappy kept fixing up sneeches off again, on again, in again, out again, through the machines they went round and about again, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money, they kept going through until neither the plane nor the star belly knew whether that one was this one or this one was that one or which one was what one or what one was who. And when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix it up chappy packed up and he went. He laughed as he drove his car up the beach. They never will learn, you can't teach a sneech. But McBean was quite Wrong, I am happy to say. The Sneeches got really quite smart on the day. The day that they learned that Sneeches are Sneeches and no kind of Sneech is the best on the beaches. That was the day the Sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon theirs. <laughs>